Arun, welcome to ODSC India. Thanks, Seamus. Now, you're no stranger to ODSC. You haven't spoken at uh, our previous events. Um, and I want to talk about that in a little while. But do tell us about yourself and do tell us about your talk you're about to give this afternoon. Sure. Uh, uh, I'm, I had one of the teams of quantitative research in Bloomberg. Um, we work in the quantitative finance discipline, uh, looking at uh, you know deep sort of domain expertise in asset pricing models, uh, um, looking at uh, derivatives pricing, for example, or uh, risk models, but obviously late, lately infusing that with um, you know machine learning and data science. Uh, as you know, finance is a gold mine for data. So um, and this this afternoon I'll be talking about uh, use of machine learning in finance, uh, especially with respect to uh, looking at sentiment-based strategies out of the news data, um, and also sort of you know more general factor rotation strategies in in, in uh, for investing. So you know definitely there's a lot of ex areas we are exploring within Bloomberg to uh, to bring sort of more automation, more data science into financial financial computing. Yeah, and Bloomberg is a great company. I used to work in finance myself, used the Bloomberg terminal, um, lots of very smart people working there, and really a lot, lot, lot of questions I could ask you, but um, one very hot area of finance has been for a while is sentiment analysis, right? Because everyone wants to gauge the sentiment of a stock, of a bond, of the markets, um, but a very difficult area at the same time because so much unstructured data there. So tell us a little bit about whatever you can about um, that area of uh, Finance. Yeah, so this, this is really the area where Bloomberg sort of started um, its machine learning efforts uh, with the with the natural language processing of news data. So, you know, we we do have the benefit of having large amount of in-house experts with our editorial staff and journalistic right. staff and and industry experts who can give us a lot of uh, training data. So we don't have to outsource our training data uh, uh, corpus generation. So our our Experts tell us whether a certain story is positive or negative with respect to the companies mentioned in that news or, or the tweet, and then uh, you know we apply sort of very complex machine learning algorithms on top of that training data to really find out um, on in real time as the stories break um, um, whether the story is going to be positive, negative, or neutral for the for the entity mentioned in that news. Yeah, like very exciting uh, stuff to work on. Um, but Bloomberg, more so than any other finance company on the planet, they, you've got a pulse into um, all the asset management and the uh, quant firms. Like, how, how big is the interest in data science, in AI for finance right now that, that you guys see from your perspective? Yes, yeah, so the, as you said, Bloomberg is uh, kind of like central nervous system of the, f of the fintech world. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, the interest in data science is really huge. I mean, um, you know, a lot of, lot of the, uh, uh, you know, processes need automation, just to begin with, um, you know, processing of news, um, generation of alerts, we even do uh, gen generation of news from data-driven signals. So we are looking looking at all kinds of multi-factor data coming coming out in the markets, whether it's macro indicators or, or market indicators, and we alert our, our trading community or our users uh, to if there's something interesting going on in the markets. Um, um, for investment as well, trying to build um, uh, trading signals from, you know, newer and non-traditional and alternative data sets. You know, uh, uh, you know, we're looking at, for example, uh, you know, credit card transactions or, um, you know, um, uh, satellite image data, which can right. tell us advanced signals on how a company might perform. So, all of these areas need uh, a heavy amount of data science. No, it's very interesting, and, and you mentioned something earlier. You um, talked about factor rotation, right, which is very much an institutional side thing, like when to figure out when to get out of retail stocks or energy stocks or into something like that. Um, pretty complex um, concept because, you know, there's that's fraught with risk, and so the machine learning has been used for that as well. It's very yeah, interesting. Yeah, so uh, in specifically we are using it for what we call style rotation, where, you know, you look at some of the, you know, investment, uh, uh, factors which have been popular over the years called the style factors, looking at value or momentum or uh, you know profitability, and you, you you'll see that these uh, factors don't have a persistent performance over time, even though they are they are long-term uh, risk premium factors, but they will not perform consistently every single period. So if you can link uh, observed market conditions uh, to performance of these factors, and then essentially build a prediction model as to which factor will be the winner next period, then 
you could sort of rotate between factors um, and build a dynamic, dynamic multi-factor strategy to take advantage of that. Very interesting. And um, PwC, I know last year released a report uh, called Season the Prize, and they showed the um, um, the adoption of AI across different industries, and they predicted between the next um, three and seven years, there's going to be a 100% adoption rate for AI in, in finance, the retail institutional side. Do you do you agree with that sentiment? Um, not sh uh, quite. I agree with 100%. I think uh, you know uh, AI in finance. I think we definitely see it making a huge impact in terms of sort of more consumer finance, whether it's to sort of look at you know uh, uh, look predicting defaults of consumers or for credit cards or loan data or a lot of like automation. Um, but in terms of investment, I think, you know, building in better investment strategy, I think um, um, as, we, as we know, finance um, has a lot of sort of inherent noise in the data. So right. to, to really build it um, robustly uh, and provably is a very complex process. Um, so, uh, you know, whether, you know, I think AI will definitely help in that process, but I think a lot of the onus is on the on the data scientists and the users to really make sure they are using proper science as well. Oh, of course, um, but there's also a lot of excitement in specific areas and new areas, like if you think um, robo-advising, right, which has got positive and negative press around it, um, giving advice to people via AI. But if you think of countries like India, which uh, a lot of people don't have access to financial advisors, for example, like huge potential around that. Any thoughts on the robo advisor industry and um, was it Kensho in, in out of Boston? Yes, it's very uh, big in that space. Yeah, Kensho was acquired. Um, I think with S and P, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think those those are like sort of entry level ideas in terms of like sort of doing simple simple data driven sort of s strategies, looking at you know um, um, you know essentially pattern analysis of uh, you know what happened in the past when similar conditions were there in terms of the market as of today, then uh, you can sort of study uh, patterns in, in history and build predictions, uh, things like that. I, I believe um, um, a lot of that has potential, is sort of simpler data science maybe, um, but it's very important. Um, but as, as we all know, um, as more and more people start using similar methods, the, the real alpha or, or premium goes away. So you always have to look for you know, newer data sources, newer algorithms. Um, uh, so the search uh, search is uh, is like ever continuing. Well, Arun, AI and finance is a, we could speak for hours. A really um, interesting topic. But thank you so much for um, being here at ODSC India, and looking forward to hearing your talk this afternoon. Thanks, Shimas. Thank you.